So now we'll proceed to the next proposal. LAC 2021-4, permission to transfer non and non-return of resources. We once again invite Jordi Pallet, who is participating remotely, so he can make his presentation. Jordi, you have 20 minutes. So I think half that time would be enough. So this is a proposal I had mentioned earlier on, permission to transfer and non-return resources. This has been divided into two parts. So this proposal is version two of a part that was presented at the previous forum. So when we voted the transfer policies, we didn't take into account there is a small lack of consistency in the policy manual that creates a discrepancy, which although small is important. And basically because resources are allocated based on need, if you have resources that you wish to transfer because that need has disappeared, it might seem obvious that if the transfer fails because the new recipient doesn't complete the process for whatever reason, it would be reasonable to return such resources. Now, it turns out that, in fact, the staff does not understand it in that way. And if a transfer fails, then these resources should be returned. But it would be quite logical that this lack of consistency should be truly reflected in the manual. Otherwise, the interpretation of the staff might change, and there might be a discrepancy between what happened at a given moment and what is done in a different time, and also for legal reasons. So what we do is to add in section 236 a very small paragraph that stating that although these initial policies are based in justifying the needs, the implementation of transfers disable the practice and maintaining of such justification. It will therefore be not mandatory to return resources to LACNIC in case of transfers, mergers, and acquisitions that failed. And this is important because it is only in those cases and not in general terms. In several RIRs, there are texts that modify this. In other words, this has been considered in other cases. And here we are making this official. And if I'm not mistaken, that would complete the situation. That would be all. In fact, I don't even have another slide for impact analysis because the staff agrees with this consideration, so I have nothing else to respond. Thank you. Thank you, Jordi. So now we're going to invite Mariela to speak on behalf of the staff. So we have impact analysis of the proposal we have on the screen. Our comments. Are on the following. The idea of this concept is a timely proposal because somehow this clarifies some of the sections in the manual. But we'd like to take the opportunity to repeat that LACNIC interprets that the authorization to transfer and non return is what is happening in practice. When the transfer process begins, LACNIC validates that all the requirements are met to proceed with that transfer. The policies currently in force do not require the offering party to specify the reason for the transfer. There might be several reasons for wishing to transfer resources. We cannot assume that the reason for every transfer is that an organization no longer needs the addresses. Therefore, if a transfer is rejected, LACNIC does not require the resources to be returned. 
the there are various examples in explaining why that that may lead an organization to transfer the resources including the following including several options so having said this we don't have recommendations we think it is important to clarify what is being done in practice as to the impact this does not have an impact on the registry system nor on the policy manual. Thank you. Thank you, Mariela. Jordi would like to respond to the impact analysis. Yes, very rapidly. Well, precisely today, Fernando made a query in the list, and I gave another example there in order to support what Mariela was saying. It would be good if this could be read out or if Fernando is going to consult this again. But this has been published in the list precisely. Well, we can invite Fernando to ask him if we would make to, would like to make any comments in the microphone during this discussion. So let us now proceed to the discussion. Let me remind you the official channels for the consensus is based on what is stated in the microphones and in the Q&A through Zoom. And also let me remind you that those who participate in Zoom can raise your hand so that Franco can unmute your phone and you will be able to ask your question remotely. So let us now start with a question here in the room. Thank you, Pedro. Jordi, could you once again show slide number four? It should be on the screen right now. Thank you. So I don't see the risks that you express in the justification, but I have nothing against in making this clearer. So you can counter my support for your proposal. However, I see that there is an error in the text when you speak about maintaining such justification. In fact, there is a justification on behalf of the recipient. So after justification, it should be of the offering party. So my suggestion is that the text should be implementation of the transfers disable in practice, maintaining the justification of the offering party. I think it's not necessary because this only enters into force if there's a failure of the transfer. So if it fails, it's not of the offering party. Or it, I mean, it's only of the offering party because it has failed. I have no problems adding it, but it's obvious that if something uh, failed in the transfer, it's only the offering party that keeps on, that maintains the addresses. Franco, are there any hands raised? No, nobody. Okay. It's, I don't see it so obvious. I think that there is a certain ambiguity, and there are things that maybe we should try to define what who the receiver is. Uh, so I think that we should include the words of the offering party. Jordi. Well, I already said that I have no problem setting it. Now, if you put this text after the transfer section as it is and you read it uh, right away, uh, back to back, you have no problems. I think it's an editorial problem. There is no problem if, if the staff says that they will continue to uh, interpret it the same way. All right. Thank you, Franco. Yes, somebody's raising the hand. Fernando. Frediani. Hello. Yes, uh, hello. My comment. Um, on what Jordi said in the list is as follows. I think that even so, we can't leave this absolutely open. 
because if the holder of the resources fails, then you don't have need of that block. I know that it's a difficult situation for those that are putting that block and making it available for transfer, but that's the way the world is. We can't uh, ignore that. The holder of the resources is saying that they don't need the block anymore. However, I understand that it's a bit difficult to make it mandatory to return the block right away because that would discourage the transfers from happening and going to the organizations that really need that block. We could put a one-year deadline so that uh, new attempts for transfers could be made. Now, if the holder um, changes their mind, change their mind, they must justify that they need that, that now they have, they need that block again, and so they won't transfer it. However, uh, if, if because if not, we are going to be ignoring a reality that is happening. I think that it's a reasonable midterm. So there are two options. Is it justified or do you return it back? Fernando, Jordi, would you like to add anything? Yes, basically. Really? The way I see it, Fernando's mistake is interpreting that the offering party doesn't need uh, the addresses because uh, they might need uh, to, they might need the money to go to IPv6 or stay in IPv4. So there are many reasons, and this was explained by LACNIC in the impact analysis. There are many potential reasons why someone will be willing to transfer uh, resources, and maybe the need continues to be there. And if a transfer fails, that organization that was going to transfer the resources has seen that they now have more corporate clients and they have to give public IPv4 addresses. There, there are many situations. I understand what Fernando says, that you should give, for instance, a one-year uh, deadline. But when we speak of uh, uh, deadlines, some people may think that one year is the right thing. Others may think two, three. That's very difficult to determine. Uh, well, there is something else, and this the manual and uh, LACNIC's uh, service agreement says that it's an annual license, and if an entity is trying, is uh, uh, transfers, and the transfers are failing in the annual renewal, LACNIC can renew it if there is still a justification of the need. So you don't have to put any deadlines, because in the current deadlines, there are no uh, current uh, policies, there are no deadlines. It, it's up to LACNIC to say that it continues to be in force then when they update the annual license. Good. Precisely on time. Thank you, Jordi. Ricardo Patara, I'm against the proposal. First of all, because the problem is not there. And LACNIC already said it. That's not something that happens. So I don't see the need to add to the document something that uh, is not necessary. But in addition to that, I see that it would uh, cause problems. First of all, you say the text states that there would no longer be a need to justify so you wouldn't have to justify the need of a block the, that it would although it would be specifically in the transfer part that you people could interpret that it, it's that it applies to all the uh, um, documents so evaluating the need is one of the key principles so i'm against that another problem i see is that the text includes not just the transfers for other reasons, but also for acquisitions and mergers that follow completely different processes. And it would be very difficult to fail in the same way that you would for a transfer through other motivations. So I'm against it. And finally, it's funny that the author in the text expresses concern that somebody would transfer willing to transfer maybe the maybe the idea that the person doesn't need it but at the same time 
uh, answered Fernando Smade, saying that you can't assume that when you start a transfer, it is done because you don't need it. So that, that would be a conflict. But I, I repeat, I'm against the proposal. Well, exactly on time. Ricardo, basically, if it were the way you say it, I think that the impact analysis would have seen those aspects. And what is clear is that the impact analysis is telling us that that's the way the uh, staff evaluates us, but without having it in writing. And that doesn't make sense. Standards, regulations should be uh, in writing. So uh, maybe there's no need to say whether if it's uh, after one month or well, six months or one year. That is not necessary indeed. Now, what is clear is that you are the legally uh, not protected if it's not in the manual. Now, if there is a contradiction between the proposal and what I answered to uh, Fernando, it makes sense because that is what they said with the impact analysis. The reason why someone may be willing to uh, have a transfer is many, and it may change with time. So it it's, uh, it makes sense if you find contradictions. Franco, does anybody else want to take the floor online? No, not online. No Q and A questions. No hands raised. Re very quickly to answer what Jordi says, I don't like the idea to state that LACNIC is not doing that work. LACNIC does some, that LACNIC is doing something that is not in writing. Nowhere in the text do they say that when the transfer was in, uh, started, you assume that the block that uh, is uh, going to be transferred is no longer necessary for the ISP. So it's not good to say that LACNIC is doing anything against the policy manual. Thank you, Ricardo. I'm not saying that anything is that things are being done wrong. As a matter of fact, my proposal agrees with what is being done, so I would be contradicting myself with that uh, view. What I'm saying is that we need legal security, and precisely to back up what Rachnik is doing, we need that text. Thank you, Jordi. Anybody else would like to make any comments? Franco, online? No, not here. Would anybody else like to make any comments about this? OK. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, all those who participated in this proposal. Thank you for sharing your opinion. Now, let's measure the temperature in the room. Remember that in the poll, you, um, in Zoom, you'll receive it. It will look like a poll. But here in uh, LACNIC, we'll be measuring the hands raised. Let's give some time. There's another comment here by Pedro. We asked him to read it, so it's recorded. I'm a question for the chair. Uh, the chair is that in when you're measuring temperature, you have to clarify with whether you are including the offer, the offering party, or with the text as it is, because Jorge said that it was an editorial change. Well, we don't evaluate. This is something that we never clarify during the presentations. We do not evaluate any modifications to the proposal during the forum. So as a response to this, we would be evaluating the opinion of the community based on the current text with no modifications, although in the future it might be editorial. If Would anybody say that they are in favor of the change by Pedro? Please say it there. 
Oh, stand up and go to the mic. No? Okay. So now let's uh, implement, uh, enable the poll in Zoom. Please, in the room, raise your hands if you agree with this proposal. Thank you. Now we request, uh, please raise your hands if you are against this proposal as presented by Jordi. Okay, thank you. So p now please raise your hands if uh, uh, those of you uh, who have abstentions. Okay, thank you. The proposal LAC uh, 2021 uh, slash four uh, version two um, has is going to complete its uh, eight weeks uh, on May 25th, 2022. So from then on and uh, up to two weeks, the chairs would uh, inform the community whether the consensus has been reached. Well, we could uh, play bingo and then we would um, Alejandro declared that he won, so come here and uh, give your address. Say a few words. What were the words? IPv6, address pool, mail list, and comments. Good, thank you. We have another measurement of temperature in the room. It wasn't, it wasn't in the agenda before going to lunch. Is measuring temperature, stating whether giraffes are mute or not. Raise your hand if you think that they are mute. Poor giraffes. So, we have time left. The next and last will do it after lunch. <laughs>